Hello and welcome to the Global Markets Advisor. Today I wanted to talk about after brick comes the mist, is what they call it. We look at the four BRIC countries that are known as Brazil, Russia, India, and China. Together with the USA, this comprises the five most influential economies in the world today, based on three traditional economic drivers. One being the total area size of their country, one being the size of their populations, and one being the availability of capital. And I won't run through those numbers now. But based on these three economic factors, the four BRICs, together with USA, stand far ahead of all the other economies in the world, which explains why a group, as a group, they are so more, uh, so more, much more important and influential from both an investment, business, and more recently, a ge geopolitical perspective. It is very important to keep this in mind when reacting to shorter-term perspectives and commentary from the media, market analysts, and economic pundits. We see that in January this year, the leaders of the four BRIC countries, who now meet at least once a year, decided to invite South Africa to join their annual leadership forum and to participate in their other BRIC forums. This announcement caused economic commentators and bloggers to start speculating whether or not the BRIC should now be referred to as BRICS, and whether, in fact, South Africa deserved a place at the table alongside these four large emerging economic superpowers. Jim O'Neill, now chairman of Goldman Sachs Asset Management and the creator of the BRIC acronym, was clearly surprised by this announcement and was quoted as saying, while this is clearly good news for South Africa, it is not entirely obvious to, to me, referring to uh, Mr. O'Neill, why the BRIC countries should be, have agreed. South Africa rightly sees itself as a leading and emerging nation, and that, and that explains their motive. But furthermore, their historic trade ties with Brazil and India would justify South Africa wanting to be part of any quote-unquote club that relates to trade relations between them. Of course, the rapid trade that's, had, that's developed between China and Africa, South Africa included, can explain much of their motive also. When I created the acronym, I had not expected that a political club of leaders of the BRIC countries would be formed as a result. In that regard, the purposes of the two might be regarded differently, and more so after this news. So as far as the economics are concerned, South Africa is one of the more wealthier nations in Africa, and is currently the largest in U.S. dollar terms at around $350 billion. However, this is quite small, not only by BRIC standards, but compared to some others. For example, Russia, around $1.6 billion, nearly five times larger than South Africa. And India is currently similar in size to Russia. Brazil is currently closer to $2 billion in size, while China is considerably larger at, at around 5.5, uh, well, actually 5,500 billion, I should say. Importantly, there are a number of other econom economies from the so-called emerging world that are bigger than South Africa. These would include Indonesia, right around 700 billion, Mexico, around 1,050 billion, Turkey, around 725 billion, South Korea, around 1,000 billion. These four nations, along with each of the BRIC economies, are all 1% or more of global, global GDP, and what we would increasingly think of as quote-unquote growth economies. It is tough to see how South Africa matches up to these four countries, never mind the BRIC countries. As a result of the above, Jim O'Neill proposed a new grouping of emerging countries, which has evolved into a new acronym called the MIST, M-I-S-T and has caused even more debate about the pecking order of the world's new economic superpowers and who we should be looking out for as a next wave of emerging nations. It is interesting to compare each of these four quote-unquote myths alongside the four bricks on the same three traditional economic factors that we discussed earlier in regards to the total area of the country, their population size, and the availability of capital. The MISC grouping sits far behind the BRICS in terms of their economic uh, influence, wealth, their size, and even their populations. Of course, this doesn't mean that they are any less important or relevant in terms of their trade, investment, and or their business opportunities. It just means that they are smaller, less influential, and they contribute less to global GDP growth. So what should we make of all this? For what it's worth, it's very distracting to get caught up in all the short-term speculation, the gossip, the commentary about all the different acronyms and the groupings, and all the various labels that are given to the emerging or the submerging, the frontier, the developing, <laughs> or the developed markets. 
as, as can be noted from everything we've discussed, the four BRIC countries are the largest, the wealthiest, and most populated countries in the world. They have no debt. Their economic growth rates are higher than in the old G7 countries. They have lifted millions of people out of poverty and now are making a substantial and growing contribution to global growth, consumption, productivity. It's hard to imagine that this won't continue for the next 50 years or more, possibly the whole of this century. And while there are no doubt, while, while no doubt there will be shocks and slowdowns and challenges along the way, there can be little doubt that we have a new, that we've entered a new chapter in our economic history in which the BRIC countries led by China and India will play the most dominant of all roles. Thanks for tuning in to the Global Markets Advisor. Stay tuned for more updates on what's happening in the global marketplace. Thank you.